It's busy days, big it's busy weeks and busy months over here, my friend, and I can't remember pod numbers. So if you want to keep pod numbering these things, what is it? Uh I think we are sixty six. There we go. Sixty six. Yeah. It's like two thirds of the beast. May we live to podcast that long, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a, a lot, really a long lot time. of podcasts away. <laughs> We're gonna be like ninety five still podcasting. I don't think we'll be there. <laughs> Uh, one, one can dream. One can yeah. dream. How you been, buddy? Uh, I've been all right. Uh, I'm just gonna like real quick segue immediately into the homeowners minute. Uh, Cause things are not all right. Well, I don't know. They're, they've been better. Oh uh, no. I was involved in a traffic accident, Andrew. Okay. Fender bender to total destruction. Oh, fender bender. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we were, uh, I'll just tell the story cause it's more illustrative than anything else uh we were stopped at a stoplight in the left turn lane there were two cars in front of us the first car in line uh had his hazards on and was like out of the car and like waving people around him because his car was bad or something unclear what happened to that car so the person in front of me a red mustang decides that well he's going to back up because needs to back up and, and go around this car. And that's fine. He's backing up very slowly. Everything is fine. Uh, and then, you know, he ne- decides, oh, well, he actually needs a little more space and and floors it straight what? into my bumper. I don't Why know did... what. I don't know, what? dude. No idea. I was honking at him as he was backing up. I'm like, hey, need to, you know. And I just, like, laid on the horn as he was backing straight into me. It's like slow motion. I'm like, well, he's going to hit me. Nothing I can do here. Was there people behind you? Uh, there was someone behind me, so I could not back up really much either. I had sort of like reversed and gone back like, you know, several feet, but I needed him to be out of the way in order for me to, to move. So, oh man. Yeah. So, um, as, uh, you may know, uh, the license plate holder for my license plate is on the right passenger or the, the passenger side front bumper. Uh, it's not in the center of the, of the bumper. It's near where it's where the tow hitch is. And that happens to be where he hit. Uh, and so my license plate was bent backwards and indented into my bumper now. It's um, kind of like a weird, cool tattoo. It, yeah. Except that, you know, now I can't, it, it's, it's tilted at like a, <laughs> I don't know, like a 45 degree angle or something. Uh, you know, cause it, it stuck out a little bit from the car. Uh, uh-huh. but now it's like, it's digging in there. It wants to it's looking for gold inside the bumper. <laughs> um, it's not funny, it's, but it's funny. It is a little funny. Uh, and yeah, so that, uh, I assume that it's going to have to be completely replaced because I don't think you can fix those things. Um, seems busted to me. So yikes. Yeah. That's not great. Um, any, uh, personal damage to either of you being in the car and hit. No, no, it, hard? everyone was fine. It, it was uh, not actually that fast in terms of like a, a collision. Uh, um, he backed up, but was like, you know, I don't know if he saw us or finally heard me over his music or whatever. I don't know what was going on. Um, the younger kid, uh, under 21, cause he had the up and down license, which was a trip. When I saw it, I was like, what is this guy like foreign or something? It's crazy <laughs> license. I've never seen this before, but I had never seen a under 21 license before in uh, a while since they moved to the vertical thing. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, got pictures of all that and the insurance and everything and blah, blah, blah. It was all good. Um, you know, called the claim and was there like, yeah, okay, we'll call you, you know, cause it, of course it happens on Sunday when the claims people are closed. Sure. So they take the claim. They're like, "Yeah, yeah, we'll get back to you on Monday." And got back to me, uh, and they're like, "Yep, they're uh, they're admitting complete fault. Everything is fine. Uh, so no problem for you. Just you know, take it to one of these places, and we'll get you a rental car, and everything will be squared away." That's the so, worst process. Yeah, it's just it's not great. It's um, the most inconvenient and like it's yeah. just weird. It's weird how. Such an expensive item that's so durable can cause you so much grief for the, even the smallest in, like problems. Right. And, and like you know, he he couldn't have been going more than fifteen miles an hour. Sure, like yeah, it was not a high speed collision of any type, not right, even right. F- that forceful, really. But like even as we've learned from you know like Top Gear, you can beat the heck out of most cars and they'll still get you somewhere. But like at the same time, right? Like you the know, car runs fine. Like, yeah, I yeah, take yeah, it to yeah. work. You know, but like right, right. 
but then but then when you decide to get something like this fixed or a small problem fixed it's just like the biggest hassle in the world you, yeah, know, you gotta a, wait for 45 annoying. minutes to drop it off then you gotta get your rental car then you gotta you know what i mean it's yeah just and forever. like the shop is the place that has to take you to the rental car place and do they have uh-huh. a guy available and like uh-huh. is the rental car place open and what day is it and who's paying for what and all this stuff and luckily you know the the insurance company is like we'll pay we'll pay you and we'll get our money back from from them so we you don't have to deal with them directly right um which is nice but also like still it's still just a hassle man the whole process it's just not easy you know i can't just take it and drop it off and be done in a weekend because it's a bumper you know the it's going to take a while for the part to come in and they have to paint it and all the whole thing to match and everything. It's going to be, it's going to suck. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, and then it'll probably look nicer than the rest of the car because it's new and the car is not. So, you know, uh, yeah. And those repaints are always a little tiny bit hazy compared to factory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I have a metallic coat or a metallic color, not a mm-hmm. standard color. So yeah, it's going to be, uh, it'll be interesting. We'll see what it ends up looking like. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure, but you know, Hey, it's, uh, I'm not paying for it. So at least there's that. <laughs> yeah. How about yourself, man? What have you been up to? Well, I became a contractor this week, pretty much. Whoa. Andrew taking jobs, getting a license. <laughs> I wish I had a contractor's license, but, uh, no, I finally moved into some projects that we wanted to do for a while that I physically cannot accomplish. We need a, a fence piece of, you know, like standard steel fencing, and we need mm-hmm. some, some new gates for the front of the house, and we decided to do some curtain rods uh, for our front windows, but those are going to be made out of wrought iron. So we, these are some large ticket items that also mm-hmm. require a specialized person to create and install. So, uh, you know, had some some uh some vendors out over the last couple of weeks who have mostly just fallen through the cracks completely because apparently people don't like to work and yeah. uh finally found some trustworthy people that are willing to do some stuff you know yeah the, the problem is in that industry at least in my experience they're not interested to come out to get the estimate but after you accept their their offer for the work they are there immediately yeah. so but i actually giving found the com- estimate is the hardest part <laughs> sure yeah <laughs> So I actually found a company in New York that's going to make these, you know, wrought iron curtain rods that I want. Oh, and cool. They'll, they're going to ship them out here for pretty cheap. And, uh, you know, so I just have to do all the measuring and the install and the designing. So, you know, learn how to do all that sort of stuff. And then I sent designs over to this gate guy. He's a, like, specialized welder. And he's the first dude that came out and actually sounded like he knew what he was doing and tried to convince me to spend less money. You know, like, no. give him my ideas. He's like, well, why would you do that? I said, well, because of this, this, and this. He goes, yeah, but... Sure, you're right, but you're just spending more money, and I really don't think you need to. Well, I'm like, well, I mean, okay, um, okay. Well, I'll decide whether I want to do it. But now I completely, you know, feel like you're not out to get my my cat. You know, you just yeah. want to get the job. He has a at least a uh, functional yeah, mindset. Yeah, like opinions about stuff. Sure. Yeah, and that's good. Yeah. So you know, getting getting the ball rolling on some bigger ticket projects uh, around the house. That need to be done because uh, my side gate has officially fallen off the hinges. <laughs> oh, rip. Okay. <laughs> Burying the lead there. Yeah, well, I buried the lead a little bit. So, you know, there'll be a big dumpster outside of my house, and we're going to break up some more cinder block and get some okay. new gates, my man. Doing the whole thing. And Doing so thing. is this both sides of the house now that you're making a gate? Both sides of the house are going to get big new gates, designer, cool look gates that are going to like be the centerpieces for the front yard kind of in a way. And then uh, these I mean, curtain rod things do you mean will be the, huge. Do you mean the side pieces because they're on the side of the front yard? That's a oh, you're making a, you're making a joke pun. Yeah, I know. It's how does the centerpiece exist on the side? I don't know. I don't. Maybe it's a I, theme. Is it a yeah. theme? Well, I guess so. It ties. It's like the it's like the dude's rug. They're gonna tie the look it, together. It's gonna tie the whole thing together. Okay. Well, yeah. that's very important. You need. This. <laughs> Sorry, I. It was too good. <laughs> Uh, so it was a, a nerve wracking experience for me and continues to be because once these things, sh- the gates will get installed, but once these curtain rods show up, I'm kind of like on my own. Curtains are not that tough to install. I installed several curtains in my home. You just, well, I don't know what kind these are. So that's, I guess the first step. Yeah. These come with like heavy duty brackets. You know, the, you know. the, bra- the brackets, you kind of just drill in there, uh, and 
and screw them in after. So not yeah. at least the ones that I have um, were not too much. Picking out the actual curtains that you want was much harder, at least in my case. <laughs> Being in the interior designer is harder than the contractor. At least for me, I don't know. Like I, I can do, I can measure and screw and drill, and those are things that I'm good at. But like picking out colors and shades, and I didn't did not enjoy. <laughs> would not repeat. Would not do again. Oh. One of five. All right. Well, I'll have some help there, I'm sure. So Yeah, that w- that would be nice to have had. There you go, man. Well, what did you get up to this week? I need to know. Yeah, I can't even keep the days straight, man. It's getting I rough. know, I told you. Like uh, I said at the beginning, fast days, fast weeks, and fast I months. I can't keep man. up, man. Uh, So, yeah, it's been uh, a relatively calm uh, weekend. We had some uh, dinner with the extended family, or at least my extended family, uh, The my new extended family, not uh, Stephanie's family. Uh, it was nice. I got to see all the cousins and the kids and stuff over on that side of the family that I had not met some of uh, in several years. So that was nice. Um, played a, got to play a few games and trying to keep up with uh, the Gwent and the Hearthstone new stuff. And uh, nice. And Can I? More. Yeah. Gwent question you. Gwent, I love. Gwent I love you. I love to be Gwented. I keep seeing on their Twitter, mm-hmm. like card previews. Yep. They're still making new cards, even though it's in beta and they haven't like finished think, changing all the base set. I assume that this is like a new set of cards or something that they're they're planning to release. Oh, or maybe their plan is just to keep adding cards to the base pool forever and ever. I don't but know. They haven't like released any of them. I keep seeing card previews, but none yeah. of them hit the hit the game ever. Yeah, they've definitely done shown stuff off, but not actually patched anything. I've I've seen like some people pretty like the hell are they doing here kind of confused about the the update situation it's been quite a while since we've seen a patch for gwent several months at this point i think no really maybe a month nah it's been at least two seems like they're trying to figure stuff out but i was just curious like if you since you're on like the forums and stuff Mm -hmm. if you knew or if anybody knew like what okay so they keep just like trickle feeding twitter cards but the, I, Where no is this one all ha- going? <laughs> no one has any idea, man. They have not announced any plans, or none that I know of. Um, you know, I don't. They're. It's kind of been like, hey, here's some some new stuff, man. Enjoy these. I the idea of these. Oh, okay. Um, preview of the future. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Maybe they're like not happy with the way some of the cards are, and they're planning to switch them out for these ones, or Ooh. like they feel some of the factions aren't complete or something i don't some know i have no good. idea i noticed when i was looking through some of the factions like i don't think that the rarities are even it definitely the case that the cards that people actually play for some factions are very heavily skewed towards higher rarities sometimes maybe they yeah, don't like yeah. that definitely um, i think like you could run northern realms with only like reavers and golds and then uh you know you run like Scott, I don't even know how to say the green faction. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's like all, all rare and higher. <laughs> They're all spells. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty uneven. Uh, and like you know, I, I'm sure they're not happy with the fact that like some of the factions pretty much only have like one type of deck they can play. Yeah, uh, that's any good, you know. Um, I'm sure they don't like that. Um, yeah, I've started to see some more variety of stuff from some of the other factions recently. Um. You know, I've seen some elf-based weird decks for the Scoia'tael and, like, some... There's, like, th- three different types of Skellige decks I've seen, so apparently all those nerfs they got didn't matter whatsoever. <laughs> um, I still see a lot of uh, Nilfgaard. I see, yeah, I some of those reveal of Nilfgaard decks are really good, man. I've lost to several of those different flavors. Yeah, and uh, you never know which one it is. It's like, oh, yeah. he's revealing me to do what? Yeah, I the Northern Realm seems to be pretty stagnant. At least I've seen people play the different leaders for Northern Realms, but it seems reavers, like reavers, 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 reavers. Yeah, there's a lot of reavers. Uh, <laughs> there's definitely not. I I played one deck one time that used the the Bloody Baron card finisher thing, um, but otherwise it's basically everyone. You know, it's a compete for various game cards in the mid game, and then reavers for the end, and hope hope yours is bigger. The last change Reavers got was to add in that guy that copies Reavers, so that then they have four Reavers, so you can't, like, you have to I kill mean, and lock two of them in a row. 
I mean, that guy has been in the Reavers deck for forever, but they nerfed the power of all the the Reavers. So they used to be even bigger than they are now. <laughs> They're still huge. They're still they still get pretty big, yeah. yeah. Especially when you play the fourth one. And the yeah. Anyway, so I just was curious if you knew that Gwent answer, but uh, I, I don't. Unfortunately, their communication has not been clear. We missed you this weekend. I know you know it was a last minute invite, but we had a little uh, shindig thanks to our friend of the pod, Michael. We played some board games, buddy. Oh yeah, dude, yeah. I love board games. This is this is totally like the moment where we say, oh yeah, but gamers doesn't mean just video games. It means board games. That's awesome, talk- dude. Yeah, what did you guys talk- get up to? Well, we played some standards like uh, Rise of Augustus and Seven Wonders and a little bit of Suro, and we went out for some beers at uh, Bottle Logic. Shout out to Bottle Logic for the uh, growlers for the party. Nice. And um, we also cracked open a game that you and I have played a different version of and that I wanted to ask if you'd tried and give you a few insights about if you hadn't. Okay. Let's, uh, what, what is it? Way long in the history past... When this podcast maybe didn't sound as good as it does now, so professional. We had a day we tried out Talisman, the the game, like the physic, the non physical game, the the video game. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. We opened Relic this weekend. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I uh, I believe if longtime listeners of the pod will recall that I actually enjoy Talisman, despite it being maybe. There's numerous documented flaws with that game, let's say. Less and less as you add more and more to it, but then as you add more and more to it, it gets longer and longer. <laughs> and the amount of work and thinking and pieces increases and increases and becomes less desirable to play, except for the right kind of person that wants to right. get into that stuff. Right. I do have to admit that I have no expansions to my physical copies of those games. We played with Andrew Lee on this as well, and he had some of the expansions that we didn't use but he described what was in them they sound fun but in relic at least i'm kind of glad we didn't play with any um there were some variants to the game that we didn't use there's like missions to to accomplish in the center of the board they call them scenarios okay and so instead of just getting to the middle and doing what's on the board in the middle like you normally do in talisman Mm -hmm. the middle has like an ever-changing like like scenario on it which affects what happens around the board as well as like what characters do and like the thing that happens to you when you get to the middle interesting so that that's like randomized uh we played with the easy one which doesn't do anything you just get there and you win (laughs) okay yeah the 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 talisman special right uh because because it was our first try around the board but the game overall had some more mechanics. It definitely had like some different leveling and stronger powers. Uh and you there's no fate for re rolling, JJ. Ooh. We house ruled it because we had already been playing a little bit, thinking influence allowed you to re roll, but it doesn't. Ooh, wow, that's a big change. Instead, powers have numbers on them. And instead of using a power, you can just use the number on it as a dice roll oh interesting and if you hit a six dices dices dice explode okay it's one of those kind of games yeah the exploding dice thing is an interesting way to like reward high rolling but i don't know it depends on how you use it i guess does the game still use d6s yes so if you use a power six card as a dice roll you auto explode Interesting. Right. So the the combat sounds like it can be very lethal. Then, like you could just get like straight ah. cat people pretty quick. Guess what? You can't fight each other. Oh, that's not as fun. Well, it's it makes a little bit of sense uh, since you're all Imperium, and since the game is kind of harder, the monsters okay. are the monsters are bigger, and you get corrupted over the course of the game. Ah, interesting. <laughs> Uh, Can you become a Chaos Lord instead and just be like, all hail Nurgle or whatever? Andrew was telling us there is an expansion where there is a Chaos player on the board and he can just wreck anybody that he wants to. Yes. Um, If you go over your corruption, you essentially, like, lose your character completely uh, and have to start over. Yeah, okay. And it's similar to Talisman when you die, then. Yeah, so if you die in this, you actually just lose your stuff. Okay. Uh, but you have to get corrupted to be to lose your character. 
I see. So you can still just die, drop your stuff, keep yeah. going. Yeah. But if you get corrupted, you're just you're just you're done. Out. So you got to be mm-hmm. someone else. So there were some significant changes from Talisman, and I felt it kind of like refreshed base Talisman from being very onerous and like, oh look, I drew a twelve. I just ought to lose this. Whereas hmm, I have power six. And he has power 12, so if I explode on my first die and roll really well on my second die, there's a chance. Yeah, it definitely always gives you the feeling that, like, well, you could win yeah, if you just yeah. keep rolling sixes. Right. And the quality of the game and the art felt a little bit newer, obviously, because it's a newer game. Sure. The um, Talisman, the original game, is definitely kind of stuck in that, like, 70s and 80s era of fantasy. Sure, yeah, yeah. And it's kind of no escaping from that. The, like vinyl busts that come with it are pretty cool too yeah i have to admit. that not gonna lie when i saw that game coming out way back um as a fan of talisman i knew about that game because sure it's, it's talisman but warhammer themed uh and i saw those and i was like oh man these are so cool yeah uh but i never ended up getting it so it's cool to hear that it's actually good so having never played it before I would say I quite enjoyed it, and I think it's a, a definitely a different game, and a base set game with no special rules in the center of the board still took us about an hour and a half Okay. until I got 12 life, and I said I was just going to run for the middle of the board no matter what happened, mm-hmm. and then I made it there with like two left. <laughs> YOLO, dude. Sometimes it works. You never know. <laughs> I was like, I'm capped out on life, and everybody else wants to play something else. Let's just try for the middle. <laughs> See what Do happens. It, man. Do it, man. Uh, so we just paused and let me run to the middle and see if I would die. <laughs> Everybody the else games just... can the games can go on for quite a while. Yeah, uh, in, in Talisman as well. You know, two hours is yeah not uncommon. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So, thumbs up on that one. Awesome. I think from people that had not tried, by the way, Rise of Augustus and Seven Wonders before, we also got set thumbs up on those games as well. Uh, I am a big fan uh, and proponent of Seven Wonders, as you know. So Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorites there for sure. Yeah. It was fun watching people look at symbols for like, you know, 20 minutes and being and assuring them, assuring them, please just, just keep trying. It's it's so much better once you know the symbols. Yeah, it really is. (laughs) That is really the hurdle with Seven Wonders for sure. Yeah. So, so many symbols. It was nice. It was a really refreshing night. I'm really glad uh, Michael wanted to play board games and uh, I want to thank him for that. It was a uh, it was a night for everybody for sure as well as celebrating. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty great. Uh, I know there is a digital version of Relic also uh, for folks out there who maybe want to try it. I no idea if it's any good or not, um, but you know I'm pretty sure you can play with friends and stuff uh, if you all have that. So there you go. Uh, so I played some more of the Near Automata. I have some updates on that game. Uh, things I want to say. Uh, but I'm not sure how much of them I should say because they are pretty spoilery. Ooh. Um, should we just do a fat spoiler alert here and just say it? Is it too? Will we not? Yeah, will we not I don't know. The, like, I, the question is going to be, Andrew, are you going to try to play this game ever? That's I need to know because I'm happy to tell you, mm-hmm. but you know the people can fast forward through a spoiler alert. But uh, am I going to spoil this for you? Are you going to ever make any attempt to play this game? I'm interested based on what you said, but the likelihood is that I'm not going to make it there for quite a long time. I'd say just go for it. I'm I'm just going to be more curious to hear what you think, and if it involves spoilers, let's just do it. Hey everyone, if you're looking to keep yourself out of the spoilers, jump ahead to the 38 minute mark and you should be all safe. Okay, so spoiler warning here, I guess, uh, folks, if you plan to play this game yourself, uh, which I absolutely recommend... Yeah, uh, full full recommendation here for me. Um, a great game uh, that I think uh, anyone who enjoys these sort of action combat games would would really like to like this one. So okay. uh, go ahead and skip ahead several minutes, and uh, we'll we'll catch back up with you later. So, you know, I mentioned that I had gotten to one ending in the game, uh, and that there were many different ones. Right, and that you had to play through with multiple characters to get there. Right. Uh, well, the the second and subsequent playthroughs are much shorter, it turns out. Oh, okay. I thought you were prepped for quite a long haul, it sounded like there. Uh, that's what I thought, too. Um, it turns out I was wrong. I didn't know what I was talking about. So you're just kind of filling gaps. 
Uh, yeah. And so the the second playthrough uh, is from another character's perspective, and you play through the events of the first character. We kind of get to see through the other person's eyes. The third playthrough starts from a new character's perspective, who you sort of like met once mm -hmm. during the the second and first playthroughs, uh, but takes place after both of those playthroughs end. So it kind of continues the story rather oh, again. than yes. Okay. So the the third playthrough begins where the second and first playthroughs end. So no more gap filling and you you start some new storyline. Okay. Yeah, the story continues. Is uh, 3 the last one? No. There oh. are there well, so there are as many endings in this game as there are letters in the alphabet. So there are 26 endings, letters A through A through Z. What? Um most of them are jokes. So there are like joke endings for every time you like if you run away from a critical mission objective and like it says we have to go here now and then you turn and run the other way there's a joke ending for you deserted your duty or there's a you know you need to uh you know use this critical item and you sold it <laughs> uh which the game allows you to do <laughs> uh and it's like you decided you cared more about money and then deserted the forest because screw this oh no uh, or there's one for if you pull out your, remember you are an android, which is a, you know, humanoid robot. Right. Uh, if you pull out your OS chip, which is one of the customizable, you have a whole series of customizable chips that give you different kind of effects, increasing your weapon power, your range damage, or giving you a little shock wave on your attacks or, you know, all kinds of other little bonuses. Mm -hmm. Um, if you pull out one of these chips that you have equipped all the time is the OS chip. If you pull that out, you die immediately. And there's a joke <laughs> ending for that. It's really good. It's really funny. I love that they give you the option to do that. That's amazing. Yep. All all through the game, there's a bunch of silly endings for stuff like this. There's one case where a lady gives you a fish uh, as a joke. Uh, and if you eat the fish, you die because it causes your internal motor oils and stuff to seize up and, and then you die. Well, fish oil should be good for you. It's well, like not for robots. Appa not, apparently not for <laughs> robots. Uh, and so that's that was the that's a joke ending there. Uh, there's a bunch of different joke endings all throughout the game. So the, the serious endings, uh, are the first letters. So it goes A through E. So I guess that's five. Okay. So those are the serious sort of like the, the story endings. So you know that there's essentially five playthroughs. Yes. Now, like, like I said, because C picks up after A and B end, you're not really it's not really a playthrough. It's like continuing the story. If you stop after the second, the first playthrough, you haven't seen like it, there's an ending, but it's not, mm -hmm. you don't know the story. Huh? And if you, if you get into the second playthrough and say like, eh, I don't want to see this. Like I'm, I'm bored. You are really missing out. Um, oh no. So a after the, and the third playthrough, the route C is uh, a little bit, uh, it's different because you switch back and forth between a couple different characters at that point. Mm -hmm. um, so like you'll, you're this character for part of it, and then you switch to the other one and do things for that character, and then you switch back and forth uh, at certain specified times. Uh, and that, man, that story goes some places, man. Wow. Some, some existentialism? Uh, so there's definitely still a lot of that. Um, you know, what is the nature of consciousness? It, can machines be alive? uh that sort of stuff and like what does it even mean to say that you're alive you know like is a is a ai like could it be like can it have a will can it have a you know can a robot have like a, a desires of its own sure you know, independent of other robots or a network or something like that do androids dream of electric sheep a little bit uh it turns out a little bit Okay. Uh, and and so that's the and at the end of route C uh a uh you come to a pretty final deciding point. <laughs> uh and there are two more routes. Uh there's oh wait, yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's a final deciding point near the very end of the game where you pick one side or another uh, and one of those is the end of route C, the other one is the end of route D. After you complete one of those, but not the other one, you unlock a chapter select and a debug room. 
which essentially allow you to jump to any point in the story that you feel like. Just like go to the menu, select the part of the story you want to go through from the A, B, and C routes. Okay, from the first three characters. Got it. Uh, and just go wherever you want and play whatever part you want. Set the Basically set the game world and the state objectives to whatever. Okay. So like you can go back and clean up any side quests you missed and all that sort of stuff. You retain your levels and your items and everything you have uh, unlocked. Uh, up to that point and so you basically like you can go down and mow through anything that you forgot or missed or whatever okay including go back to that point at the end of the chapter and choose the other side oh right Uh huh. so you do that you go back and you get the other ending the d instead of c right depending on which way you chose it uh, and it immediately throws you into the e route Oh, so you, once you know what C and D were, then they're like, okay, now your character's had this existential moment where he knows that there was another option for his life, essentially, or her. So at the end of the game, there is a sort of a cataclysm that happens uh, for a bunch of reasons that are probably not worth explaining, and the memories of all these robots that have been backed up you know, for centuries and centuries in this endless cycle of this war between the machines and the androids that's been going on for forever. Mm-hmm. The sort of the source of all of these memories and stuff kind of gets destroyed. <gasps> and so you're sort of left at the end with this the the this choice of you have the ability to reset and start again. Mm-hmm but you're starting again with the same thing and, you know, sort of continuing that cycle or, or allow there to be nothing. Oh, and, end the uh, cycle, so to speak. But the ending of the cycle is the end. There's nothing else. There's no, you don't carry on at that point. Okay. So if you, you know, want to believe that there is, you know, no fate and you can, things can turn out differently. Uh, you know, as you sort of, th- and, it, you know, I've told you how there's this like sort of shootery um, gameplay that takes place, you know, sort of like bullet hell type shooting. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Uh, so you're essentially there's like text scrolling over the, uh, you know, the screen telling you about all this stuff and because it's all being communicated, you know, from these machines to you, the player. Right. Right. And they're asking, do you, the player, want this cycle to continue or not? Mm hmm. And they give you a choice. You know, do you want to give in and let the cycle end? Or do you want to persevere and hope that there's a chance that it could come out differently? Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, the credits are scrolling down and it's kind of a shoot 'em up where you have to like blow up all the people's names and positions in the credits. And they shoot back at you with like, you know, the little orb attacks that they have sometimes. Crazy. And as the as it keeps going, the credits start getting harder and harder. And harder, and there's more and more bullets flying across the screen to the point where, like, it just it just becomes impossible. I have no idea how a person is supposed to beat this without help. Mm-hmm. And the game keeps asking you, do you want to give up? You know, do you want to give up? Do you want to give up? So you keep saying, no, you know, I'm going to persevere. I can do this. Uh, and then it finally asks, hey, would you like, you know, the, you... Uh, when every time it asks you to give up, there's little messages that will appear on the on the screen over top of the credits from other play. You see players' names. You know the game has a online component. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And it's like, oh, you know, hey, don't give up. I was where you were. You can you can do it. Um, you know, persevere, survive, that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And so you know, it asks if you will accept help. Um, oh, cool. So you finally get the option for help. Yeah, so you say yes because you can't there's no way to go forward otherwise. Uh and a bunch of sort of, you know, other players come and surround you with, you know, their sheep. They essentially, you know, uh are quadrupling your firepower or something and allows you to blast through your way to the end. Cool. Uh really awesome. And you get there and then it says, "Hey, so, you know, those those people that helped you made a choice to help you." And now we're going to give you that same choice. They had to delete their save data in order to allow you that chance to get to this ending. Uh Are you willing to delete all of your save data in order to help someone else? 
Oh, cool. And if you say yes, it deletes all of your save data. All of it. So you don't have a save anymore. You start the game up. Uh, you know, it, you know, you see the you see the end of that ending. You know, uh, and and the the payoff for that, uh, and then it shows you uh, the start screen, and the only option is new game. In a new game or your settings or quit. That's it. Epic. Uh, and that's that's the end of the game. Epic. Yeah, it's really cool. It's uh, freaking one epic. Of the, one of the coolest things I've ever experienced. Uh, as a like you know in a you know like a final end to the thing you know it's like do you want to believe that there's a chance that you know people have free will and stuff and can go on and uh you know or do you uh you know do you want to keep your save data selfishly and uh you know not allow someone else the chance to get to that ending i'm really really happy that you told me about that because that makes me really like uh I'm like uplifted, you know, in a weird yeah. way. I fe- it's a I feel... it's a really cool ending. See, that's man, that's really what games should be about, too, huh? Really making social commentary, but not not just yeah. like a, a a preachy script, but in like actual gameplay, making you decide things that think make you think about yourself. In the that's awesome, 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 awesome. Yeah, and it even prompts you, you know, right when you say like, "Yes, I'm willing to do this," it's like. Hey, you're gonna lose the the chapter select and the debug mode that you worked so hard to unlock. Are you okay with that? Uh huh. And you say yes, and it's like it, we're gonna like we're really gonna do it, dude. It's like we're gonna delete all your saves. You're gonna delete all all of your extra saves. It's not just this save that's being deleted. All of them. Uh huh. And it's you know we're gonna you're gonna have to start over, like completely for real. Are you sure? And then, you know they are you really sure? It asks you like five times. It wants to make sure you know, you know, uh, you know, you can't access the shop that exists in the game that allows you to buy the trophies or anything mm. like there's it, it's it resets the game completely, like as if you had just installed it, uh, which awesome. is really, really cool. Wow. So, you know, there's like cleanup stuff you want to do before you get to the end of that game. Um, you know, make sure you do that before you embark on that final route. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. Really, really cool. Uh, Maybe that's, absolutely you know, that, you know, now that you mentioned that too, like for the people that didn't go back before they tried this route and they still have stuff they wanted to do. Yeah, man, what a choice. Because yeah. your only choices are nothing or or that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess I don't know what would happen if you chose to not accept the help uh, and, end the, and end the cycle. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but man, that was a really awesome experience. And like, especially after like realizing that you know, you essentially are using other people's saves <laughs> there. Like, you would be the biggest ever if you didn't accept, if you didn't offer to help at that point, right? Sure. Like, you basically had to take, like, a bunch of people's deleted data uh-huh. and use it to get to the end. And then you're like, well, guys, like, no, come on. Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah, people sacrifice for you, sacrifice for them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, really really awesome uh ending to that game uh and the story is worth it uh i think i really enjoyed it there's a lot of reading um so maybe be prepared for that but <laughs> be prepared the, for, for the, reading the gameplay the gameplay is fun but uh yeah i'm i'm excited for that that's a good time sweet man Ooh, yeah what a game man oh. really really cool i'm i can't let us uh do anything that would make us end on a not uplift I'm going to try that again. Let's end on an uplifting note like that and say, um, sorry, people that tuned in now for <laughs> the non-spoiler mode. I don't know that we have much else to talk about after that. Uh, I just want to say, Andrew, uh, we talked a little bit earlier uh, about how uh, I have been a little bit lacking. Uh, I've been behind in my viewing of the new Twin Peaks oh, show. Uh-huh. And I have caught up, uh, I think, now. 13? Or maybe, Did you watch the Sundays? I am one behind, Ugh. Uh, and man, wow! I'm really sad that I was behind. Those episodes have been great. I have, so. I have unfortunate news for you. Uh oh, thirteen is maybe the worst episode of the season. No, <laughs> I, I don't. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna see. This is what I wanted to talk. I didn't want to go negative, man. We ended on such a nice space at the end of that near automata talk. No, it, it's. 
you know, I really, really enjoyed the last several, like the, I, I would say, uh, I, 10, 11 and 12 were all really great episodes. Oh, they were fantastic. And I don't, I don't mean to sound like it was bad TV, but like given the enormous amounts of build build up and mm-hmm. the, the pace that we were going at for that many episodes, yeah. it just fall, it falls flatter than everything before it just, you know, mm-hmm. like I thought we okay, were, I well. thought we were rolling along moment there is there is a really great scene with like wrapping up some stuff ar- around dougie's story but uh, beyond that I, there's it, it's just not as uh intriguing okay. well maybe. we will we will have to see uh what happens i'm sure i will get to that sooner yeah, than later yeah and uh who game of thrones but we'll, yeah, we'll do our Ooh. bonus that game of thrones was spicy yes it was <laughs> Uh, no spoilers, obviously, here. We usually wrap up at an end of a season and talk about it. Um, yeah, we I, will do that. This is probably a good point to mention. I was on another podcast this week. Andrew, you've been cheating on me. I was. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't ask your permission beforehand because I knew you'd say no. Oh, no. <laughs> where where were you so I can go hurt those vile home records? <laughs> <laughs> well, the ones attempting to split us up was actually the Geek Offensive with friend of the pod, Ken. And uh pseudo friend of the pod, but hasn't been on the pod yet, Justin. Oh, awesome. And they're awesome. Uh, explicit, by the way, in case anybody gets the idea to go listen to it. Don't do it with your kids. Uh, content. They have a kind of freeform uh, geek culture show. They usually have a pretty large panel of people on talking about, you know, one particular topic or another. And this week was he got together a bunch of people that were... Game of Thrones eggheads, because he's kind of a, uh, Justin, that is, is a little bit Mm. of a casual observer and wanted to know what the heck was going on. (laughs) Well, this was a, that was an auspicious week to do that. We did Uh, it actually, we recorded it on Friday just before the episode. Oh no. And I literally was watching going, please make my prediction happen. Please make my prediction happen. Cause the, (laughs) anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil it now, but uh, I was pretty close. Well, I will have to go take a listen to that because it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's um lengthy. It's about two hours. But uh, thanks. Hey, I enjoy the lengthy pods there sometimes. There you go. Thanks to the Geek Offensive for having us, us half of us on. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's it's okay. I represented. Yeah, good. I tried That's, that's anyway. what I want to hear. Get those hot, uh, hot uh, I don't know, cross promotion. Yeah, yeah. Go. Now, if anybody has uh, listened to the spoiler section and they have any thoughts on the near automata ending that uh, JJ was discussing, where should they send that? Uh, they can send those to uh, our email inbox, which is real. Uh, it's podcast at wewergamers.com. You can also get at us on Twitter, which is at wewergamers, and send us your thoughts. Uh, or use the Facebook page, uh, which is also facebook.com slash wewergamers. Hit us up on those iTunes and the Google Play and the Stitchers and leave the the reviews. Give us those hot numbers so we can uh, enjoy, bask in the glory of being super professional, really good podcasters all the time. All right. That teaser is still live. We probably are doing something pretty cool at the end of the month, you guys. And uh, I can't wait to oh, yeah, that's make an be... announce. Nice. <laughs> uh, we'll see you all next week.